This artist drawing research task is about researching information into the artist on this worksheet. For your research work, you'll want to write a paragraph on each artist and then include in that paragraph two or three sentences on the artist's life, two or three sentences on the artist's most famous works, and then two or three sentences where you actually describe the drawing on the worksheet. When you describe the drawing, you want to describe what you see in the drawing, what the artist has actually drawn, but also mention the techniques that have been used. Use words we've used in class to describe the marks we made in the mark making exercise. Words like line and tone and shading, contrast, dots, dashes, etc. Well presented, good quality information, seems to have written about the right amount. So in year 9 we're obviously going to look for better quality work, but what does that look like? Well, for one, the level of research and information has more depth to it. Secondly, the presentation is better. But in addition, there is a greater understanding shown by students of where research comes from and what research is of better quality. When it comes to doing research, there are generally two places you are going to find your research. One is going to be books and the second place is going to be the internet. With books, you can generally rely that the information is accurate. Obviously, before a book is published, it's going to be checked for facts and accuracy before publishers are going to spend money printing it. The internet is a little bit more difficult. If you do a search for Picasso, for example, on Google, you can see currently there are 159 million links. Now, not all of those links are going to contain accurate information. If you take a website like Wikipedia, at the top or then below where you've got picasso.org the official picasso website you can pretty much rely on that information being accurate other places for accurate information will be the websites of major museums and art galleries also if you are going to be researching pictures and images you need to be very careful here we've got picasso paintings typed into google and images selected and I can see immediately that on the second image on the top line, that's not a picture by Picasso. And then on the second line, the one at the end is a picture of a cat. Both those images are done in the style of Picasso, but they're not actually by Picasso. So you do need to be careful that your information is accurate when you're researching online. There is, of course, also videos which you can find on websites like YouTube. But again, with videos, you need to be careful where the video comes from. So for example, if the video is made by the BBC or PBS, the public broadcasting service in America, you can generally rely that the information is going to be accurate and has been checked. But some other sources may not be quite as reliable. So, if we type Picasso into Google and we go to the first most popular link, Wikipedia, you'll see there is a huge amount of information on Picasso. It's split into various categories, his early life, his career, his political views, his style, his technique, etc. And one of the problems, or one of the challenges, for people researching in the age of the internet is there is almost too much information. So what students have to do is try to work out what is relevant and what is not to the task they have been given. The one thing, of course, which is going to be the case is that the pictures the paintings by Picasso, one can rely that they are accurate. There aren't any pictures there which are 
in the style of Picasso, but actually not by Picasso. Finally, when you've decided what information is relevant and you've decided how you are going to split it up. So, for example, if you're going to talk about an artist's life, an artist's work, and maybe their influences or who they actually influenced, maybe their styles, their techniques. When you've decided on that, it's then a case of presenting it in a way which is personal to you. The other thing is, when you have presented the work, it's important to acknowledge where the information has come from. So in the back of a book or at the bottom of a well-researched web page like this, you have references, references of books and articles, maybe videos, maybe magazines, etc., where the information comes from. This Picasso entry onto Wikipedia has 124 references in the text I've just scrolled through. And then sources, which generally are books, is about another 20 books which have been used to create this article. Now, obviously, I'm not expecting you to use so many references, but maybe you've looked at two or three sources of information, whether it's Wikipedia, whether you've watched perhaps a video, whether you've gone to another website, the Picasso Museum, etc. Websites which are relevant and accurate sources of information for the research task you have been given. So the research task is to research information into either Pablo Picasso or George Brack. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to do it, but generally you go into want some information on the artist's life. You're obviously going to want some information on the artist's work, particularly their cubist work, but maybe some of their other work in general. Maybe you want some information on their style and technique, and any other categories of information are up to you. Now, in terms of how you are going to present the work, again, how you present it is up to you. So if we look at some examples... We won't look at examples of research into Picasso or Brack. We'll look at some general examples of research into artists. This first example is probably a developing. There's an interesting approach to the work in that he's coloured the background of the pages. He's typed up the information. Some of it is his own personal opinions rather than just copied and pasted. And he's got this effect of ripping out the work in a sort of collage-like scrapbook effect to present the information. And although he does write about the individual pieces of artwork and describes them, even given their titles and date, overall there isn't much information there. The page looks rather limited in terms of simply the amount of written information you can see. So if we look at this next example, it's certainly a step up in terms of how well information is arranged and presented on the page. In terms of the quality of the written information and the number of images, it's probably about the same. So it gains marks for presentation, but gets about a similar mark for content. This is an example of a secure piece of work. And finally, we see an example of an excellent piece of work, probably even excellent plus. We see this student has researched work over three pages, but it's also the way things are arranged and the amount of information on the sheets. One can see clearly defined sections on who the artist is, on the artist's work, their style, their technique, and then specific written work about certain key pieces of artwork. So this is an example of an excellent plus piece of work. So just to sum up, you have to research information into either Pablo Picasso or Georges Braque using the research skills discussed in this video. Equal marks will be awarded for the research, the written work and pictures, 
as well as the presentation on how you present and arrange the work over however many pages you need is up to you.